Hi everyone, Raquel here from Scrap Cozy. The last video I did on Christmas Cards Ideas miniseries was about this same card, but perhaps it was too long, so I've prepared this shorter version. I would like to know if you prefer this version, with less details and tips, just the basic steps, or if you prefer the longest version with as much detail as I can find relevant. I would really appreciate if you could let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Ok, let's see the basics on how to create this Christmas card. First I'm going to create my scene and I'm going to select a die from Simon Says Stamp, the circle stitches, to create a window. So I'll mark with a pencil the lines where the window should be and then I'll start stamping. I'm going to create a mini forest of three trees only and I'm going to use archival ink. Archival inks are waterproof. And now I'm going to create a mask. So the second tree is going to be a little bit underneath that one. The second one is going to be smaller even, or more short. <laughs> and now if you remove the mask, you can see the mini forest. So now I'm going to put that sentiment over there, which reads best wishes for the year ahead. And that will be all that I will stamp on this side of the card. The next part that I will stamp on is going to be the inside. But in the meantime, let's go and create that window. So I'm selecting my cattle bag and I'm putting the different plates A, B and C. And I pass it through my cattle bag several times. So once cut, I have my window. And I'm going to mark that window in the inside part of the card. So I'm going to stamp my deer there in the middle of that circle. Again with archival ink, the same color. And then I'm going to use the holy plant to decorate the rest. So to color I'm going to use infusions. I'm starting with golden sands. So just putting there in my craft sheet, putting some water and then doing a first wash out. That instantly gives me a vintage look. I'm going to move on to different color, sunset beach. And I'm going to add that into the berries of the holy. And the next color and final is going to be olive tree. So just keep on adding as much infusions and water as you need to cover the entire surface and enjoy the coloring process here. It's really relaxing. I really like this technique. Now I'm going to apply Vintage Photo Distress Ink, the regular one, on the edges and here and there. And that will add me a more vintage look. And then I'm going to apply Distress Crackle Paint, Clear Rock Candy. So now it's shiny and smooth, but it will become, well, shiny, but crackled, once it's fully dried. So now let's go back to the outside of the card, and I'm going to use similar technique. Golden sands with water and a brush, and try to add some texture afterwards, just by applying some drops here and there, and blobbing them with a the cloth. And then the next color that I'll work on is just the green because we only have the trees. And as I did before, I'm going to add some vintage touch with the vintage in distress. So I'm going to make sure that my surface is completely dry for that. Both to the outside and my window. And I'll apply it to the edges and I'll work on the card base. I'm going to create my rust paste with these fresco paints, chocolate pudding, up to fire, pumpkin soup and finally gold. To add texture I'm going to select grunge paste, distress collage medium and the sand, this one from r and Art. So I'm going to apply some grunge paste on my craft sheet, then similar amount of sand and then some distress collage medium just to make sure that my mixture dries together and the sand doesn't escape. You could substitute that with glue, as I did in this other video in the link appearing on the screen right now. Ok, once everything is mixed, then I'm going to split that mix in three parts. A big part, a medium part and a tiny bit. And then I'll use chocolate pudding on the biggest 
one because that will be my base then I'll use the orange which is autumn fire in the middle one and finally pumpkin soup for the tiny bit one and I'm going to just mix everything together to create my pastes so the idea is that you work with the biggest color first then you go to the next one and then to the next one so mixing it very well and at this point I decided that I would add some copper to the mix to the orangey and the gold it will be added as well but just to the very end and to apply these pastes I like to work with some flat brushes the ones that you would use for stenciling so I get the thick brush first so I'm just pouncing it so more pouncing on all my edges I'm preparing also two brats also rusty so they were originally gold and now they have this first layer of brown and once I finish with the brown there I'm going to apply it also to my window okay now we change color and we go to the orange so again pouncing and this time we want to apply less that is why the first well puddle that we made was very big and this one is medium because basically we need far less okay we just want a touch of orange on top of everything but you don't want to cover the whole brown okay and I'm going to repeat there also in the window and also in the brats that I'm making it rust as well and then I'll move to the yellow just a little hint and touch also there in the uh, window and as well as in the brats and now magic comes now it's time for the gold and with adding a metallic you just well get magic really and it's lovely now it really becomes rusty again I'll apply that in the window and in the brats and this will be all for the rustic part so now I'm going to make a hole on the card base so I put up a, a plate B plate and then C plate and I'll pass it through the cattle bug several times to make sure that it cuts properly so now I'm going to make just two holes for the brats so I'm placing a cut and dry foam used old I don't care it's just to not destroy my craft sheet and then I'm passing them through the holes that I just made and then I'll open the legs and because they are very close to the edge and the legs of these brats are very long I'm going to cut them and for that I'm using the team hole scissors these cut well a lot of materials and I'm so happy I can cut metal with them they are so useful so now I'm going to apply the snow if you remember my previous video that I'll link now I created this effect already this is like a, a fake snow and I'm using grunge paste first and then while it's wet I'm going to apply some embossing powder in this case I'm going to use frosted crystal by Ranger it will stick to my grunge paste because it's wet and then I'll just heat set that and now I wanted to add more snow this time to my trees so I'm just putting some grunge paste on my craft sheet some water and mixing it with the brush work on one part at a time because you want to make sure that your grunge paste is still wet while you apply your embossing powder so one part at a time and repeat the same process with the embossing powder while it's wet you put it there back to the jar and heat set it so now I'm preparing the card base the other part so the, the inside let's say so I'm going to just get the same size as my card base that I was working on before and then I'm gluing them together with my ATG gun on that flap and that's it and now I'm going to place the inside the crackled uh, part area that we worked at the very beginning so now I'm applying the distress ink into that crackled area and this is because I want the ink to go through the cracks and define them so I'm going to get the cloth and then remove that ink from the surface which is plasticky and then well I can see the cracks that they've been tinted so all that it's left is assembling 
I'm going to use Mod Podge for this and I'm going to just place all that glue on that surface and I'm pressing down. So now I'll use this Stress Collage Medium to just attach those two ribbons up and down. This is Velvet Ribbon in cream color and I think it matches very nicely, don't you think? So just cutting off that excess and we are done with the inside. So now on the outside, I could stick this with um, double side tape, but because it's very wonky and it has that window, this time I prefer to go with the Mod Podge. So I'm applying it all over the place and making sure that it's, well, everywhere <laughs> and it's wet and then press down very hard and for a few seconds and in few seconds really the, well, the surfaces are sticked at first and then it's just a matter of few minutes till it's 100% dry, basically. That's why I like this one very much, because it dries super quickly. And basically that's it. This is the card for today. I'll show you some pictures now so you can see it properly and appreciate the crackle and all the texture that we put. If you would like to see more hints and tips, you can watch the longer version. Let me know which one of the two you prefer. Over the weekend, you'll be able to see another card for this mini-series of videos called Christmas Cards Ideas. I'll show you a sneak peek in seconds. It's something really different to what I've done so far, and I just love the outcome. If you don't want to miss it, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the ring bell button, so YouTube will let you know when my next video is up. I'll leave you a couple more videos for more inspiration if you want to see them as well. And that's all for today. Thanks very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye!